the next section is is uh, dealing with kind of the the nightmare uh, scenario of uh, where you get a COD income, which is ordinary, and then you get a capital loss on your partnership interest, uh, or alternatively, um, you get COD income and you don't get any current loss because you're still in the partnership and and um, so you're just stuck there with a bunch of phantom income. So not only did you lose all your value. Uh, in, in your investment, but you also have to write a big check to the government, and um, you've got this capital loss that you know maybe someday in the future you you might or might not be able to use. So the question is is well, what can you know? Is, are there things that you can do about that to try and avoid that result? And we're going to talk about three uh, three alternatives uh, to to that: um, either incorporate the partnership abandon the partnership interest or, or uh, declare a worthlessness event. Um, so incorporating the partnership, the, the idea of incorporating the partnership is that unlike a partnership, a corporation is the testing, there's an insolvency exception that uh, one of you guys is gonna talk about later. Um, and for a partnership, the insolvency is, is determined at the partner level. So if you make an investment in a partnership and the partnership is insolvent, the property has declined massively in value and there's a lot of debt, the partnership's insolvent, but that doesn't matter for purposes of the exclusion of the COD income. It matters whether the partner is solvent. So if the partner is not, then, then you don't get that exception. If you're able to um, put that interest and get the COD captured inside a corporation, well, then you're testing insolvency at the corporate level, and you could qualify for the insolvency exception. So that's the, that's the goal of incorporating the partnership, is to try and capture that COD in, in a vehicle that's going to be able to take advantage of an exception. Um, and you, know, you, can, you can do that by converting the entity to a corporation. You can do it by checking the box. Um, you know, one, one quirky rule to watch out for is there's a five-year uh, lockout on changing the status of your entity since the last time you changed it. Um, that doesn't usually come up in this direction, but, but it can. Um, David, on, on checking the box, uh, what do you think about sort of, uh, say, the debt had been discharged and COD has been already triggered? Uh, <laughs> time travel. Right, you, <laughs> So now you may check the box retroactive to 75 days ago, which you can do, and you say well, it was a corporation, even though you did not intend, I mean, yeah, you didn't I mean, even those, know about those, this issue. Those questions come up all the time with the 75-day with the rule because... Yeah, and that's because they don't ask you about it until the debt's discharged. Right, right. right. Yeah. And, and, well, and, and the, other, the other phenomena that you, that you see in, in doing these deals is no, no real estate person will actually acknowledge that there's a problem until it's actually already been worked out because otherwise it's going gonna, it's gonna to rebound, yeah. right? So, um, you know, technically, you know, the 75-day election, you know, says that it happened 75 days ago. Um, you know, certainly, you know, as Steve was mentioning before, right, why not take a shot at it if that's all you've got? Well, it depends on, but, like, how do you report it, right? I yeah. Mean, because uh, one thing is, like, was there an intent for the corporation to assume this liability? It kind of maybe it did it's just yeah hard i mean think. i think the way the rules written it, it really is it really you know, is time travel it is time travel. um it, you know i think you have this similar things uh with you know value changes right you have something and let's you know there's an event that allows you to determine you know the the value um you know at various points in time and you make an election to go back well, to a point I, think in time, in, I, think. I think in the guidance with the new tax rules the irs specifically said certain things no retroactive check the box. I mean, there was there was effective dates, you know, right? And right, they, but that so just they, further supports. They were aware of it, but to me, that right. supports that if they didn't that say didn't. that, right?